Welcome to Perimenopause Hell. This presentation is about breast pain. Now, the standard treatment for breast pain in perimenopause and uh, cyclical breast pain at other times of your life is basically evening primrose oil. Evening primrose oil has been very well researched. It is the standard recommendation for treating breast pain in women. So that's breast pain in perimenopause, cyclical breast pain, which um, when you were younger, you may remember just getting tender or sore breasts for a couple of days before your period. So that is cyclical premenstrual breast pain. Um, there are other breast disorders that, um, that tend to get worse as a woman ages. And one of those is fibrocystic breast disease which often women feel like a chain of lumps in their breasts and it turns out to be fibrocystic breast disease and that is also painful. Many women end up having um, investigations at breast clinics for that illness but there isn't much that you can actually do about fibrocystic breast disease either so evening primrose oil is yet another recommendation for that. Now, you may need quite a high dose of evening primrose oil, so that's somewhere between two to 4,000 milligrams daily, which means four of these rather large capsules here. You can take um, the oil just from a bottle instead of in a capsule, but it's a lot more expensive to buy it that way. And you can also buy smaller capsules with only 500 milligrams in, but of course you'll need to take quite a few of those Right, eight as opposed to four to get the same dose. Now, if you've worked your way up to four, and I would suggest you start at two and leave it a month and see if that sorts out your breast pain. If it doesn't, you can work your way up by um, another capsule per month until you meet the point where your breast pain resolves. Now, you may find that you still have breast pain for a couple of days before your period starts, that's normal and that's okay. It's when it gets to be uh, three or, or four weeks per cycle that your breasts still hurt and it, you know, it hurts you to hug your kids and that kind of thing. Obviously, that's really bad breast pain and you really need to do something about it. When you go to a doctor, some doctors will tell you to take the evening primrose oil. And in fact, I was very lucky that my GP a few years ago when I first started having trouble with this told me about evening primrose oil and he prescribed it for me, which is really unusual in, in the UK. But he knew about it and he, he said that he would just give me the one prescription to try. Unfortunately, what he didn't know was that you need quite a high dose or some women do need quite a high dose. And the other thing is that women who have ovarian cysts and other things that are disrupting their hormones in, uh, they've got some sort of pathology, whether it's um, cysts or fibroids or whatnot, that are also disrupting the balance of their hormones. The uh, evening primrose oil may not be enough. The research that I've read says that it works for about 65% of women, which is quite a high amount actually. And I don't think that study was actually done with quite high doses. So I went looking for more answers because I found that I had ovarian cysts and they were really disrupting my cycle and the making the evening primrose oil ineffectual. So I went looking for more answers and I came across Lara Bryden's blog. Lara Bryden is a naturopath, although she is um, more medically conventional, I would say, than many naturopaths. And she's extremely well read in the area of women's health. She's written a book called The Period Repair Manual, which is a bit on the expensive side, but she also has a blog which is completely free to read. So I read this article which is called Why I Prescribe Iodine for Breast Pain, Ovarian Cysts and PMS. So what I will do is I'll put the link to this article in the description box underneath the video and you can go and read it for yourself if you want to. The upshot of it was that I tried iodine for my breast pain and it really worked and I was able to cut my dose of evening primrose oil back down to two 2000 milligrams a day and that was great for me because not only is evening primrose oil quite expensive obviously I was taking a lot and it, it really wasn't doing what it should have done 
So you could go and read this. By the way, we don't advise that people with thyroid disease take iodine. So if that applies to you, I'm afraid you're going to have to find other answers. And we'll deal with those in a second anyway. Lara Bryden recommends this type of iodine, which is the violet iodine brand that you can get in America. Uh, it's expensive even if you live in America to buy this brand. But if you live in the UK to import it, by the time you've paid the import tax, it's extortionate. And so it wasn't something that I could do or afford. So what I get instead is something called Lugol's iodine or nascent iodine would work just as well. And just apply some to your skin once a day. Okay, so it's not the prettiest looking thing. It is bright yellow like all iodines are. Uh, but I find that has worked for my breast pain very, very well. And now I only get breast pain a couple of days before my period a month. That's fine. What you can do if you are experiencing breast pain and it is bothersome to you, but it's only a couple of days a month, what doctors will recommend is that you take ibuprofen tablets, but there is also another option you can buy anti-inflammatory gels like this one here this is my favorite I've got arthritis anyway so I'm a big fan of these gels this one here is uh, ibuprofen and liver menthol so it's got a minty menthol um, very cooling kind of action to it and you can actually put it directly on your breasts I've heard other people recommend cabbage leaves and things like that I think that's a bit of a strange idea although I've used it for when when I've been breastfeeding and I've wanted to dry up my milk that seems to work although it probably just happens on its own and I think the cabbages have a cooling effect if you've kept the cabbage in the fridge and so on so yeah you can you can use um, ice packs and stuff if it's really bad with this particular gel, any of the ibuprofen gels, just a word of warning, you have to be really careful to wash your hands after using it and that you don't put the gel in your eyes or anywhere with a mucous membrane. So that includes, you know, your, your genitals and, and so on because that's very painful. <laughs> it's not a good idea to do that. Anyway, so I hope this video helps you a bit with um, the problem of sore breasts, which unfortunately for many women in perimenopause can become something that affects you for nearly all of your cycle. And it's really miserable.